Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus, and today we're in chapter 15, verses 22 through 25. Let's read it. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore it was named Marah. So the people grumbled at Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There he made for them a statute and regulation, and there he tested them. So traveling in the desert three days with no water, that would be, yeah, that'd be kind of a problem, wouldn't it? And that's what we have here. They get out there, and they've just had the triumph at the Red Sea, and now, but boom, instantly it's grumbling again. <laughs> They're moaning and complaining again. So, you know, you got to stop and think about this. God delivers you with 10 plagues. Then he crosses as you cross over this ocean. You go through this sea on dry ground. They see before their own eyeballs, they see chariots, uh, Pharaoh's chariots and his people drown. They see the dead bodies on the seashore. God is for them. God is for them. God is for them. Evidence, 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 evidence all over the place. And now they go a couple days and there's no water and, and now they're ready to just lose their mind. I mean, come on. God did not lead them this far just so they could die of thirst in the desert. That's absurd. Now look at the reaction here. Moses says, okay, well, I'm going to pray about it. So Moses prays and God gives an answer. He cried out to the Lord. And then the Lord gives him this kind of strange uh, solution of throwing something, showing him the stick, and he throws it in the water. He came out of there with a staff and uh, parted the waters and stopped the waters. Remember, he turned the water so that it was undrinkable. Now God gives Moses, he's got another stick, and he throws it in the water and the water becomes drinkable. So it's sort of a reversal from that very early, uh, from, the first, from the first of the 10 plagues, kind of a curious and interesting piece here. But yeah, it's, a, it's not intuitive, is it? But because God blessed it, now the waters are drinkable. And so, yeah, without God, the waters are bitter, but with God's influence upon it, the waters are sweet. So God will take things, and even if it seems like we don't know what to do here, uh, it's bitter, the water is bitter, hold on a second, don't be grumbling, don't lose your mind, have some faith in the Lord Jesus. He can take and turn bitter waters into sweet waters. And I know because he, he, he has good thoughts toward us, you know, the thoughts that he has toward us, thoughts of peace, gives a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, we know that he wants to take the bitter things and he wants to use those to build us and he wants to make them sweet. Are we willing to stand by long enough to allow him to show us solutions and make things sweet? That's a question. That's a question. Let's endure a bit longer. Let's have a bit more faith and watch and God will make our waters sweet. Now, I mentioned we're entering into a uh, space of testing uh, from this point on, another section, so to speak, in the book of Exodus, the next three or chapters or so, or especially a lot of testing in the wilderness. And remember these tests, remember the 10 plagues and the tests there, the tests are not, they're not there to destroy, they're there to build us. And we have to kind of come up a little bit at a time. It's like when you're doing push-ups, you don't just start with 30 push-ups. You might have to start with a, a few push-ups. And maybe you finally get up to 10, maybe you get up to 12, then you get up to 14. You know, you've got to build the muscles. And so God is going to test his people and he's hoping they'll grow in faith. He's going to work things out so they'll grow. Are they willing and ready to grow? One of the key things, and a lot of people completely miss it, they completely miss it. You're gonna miss it if you just go by the popular teachers. God wants you to be a disciplined person, exercise self-control, engage actively in being a Christian person, uh, do activity that God gives you to do, find a way to be faithful in that and, and take these steps. We're not, God doesn't give us the magic carpet ride, you know, and we glide into the kingdom. We've got to take steps, one step after another, just slog your way through because God is growing us. We've, we were pretty messed up. We need some help. God is going to help us. Uh, we're kind of in a boot camp and God is building us up. But let's make sure we get up really early at revelry and get out there and be on God's team and go his way and let him take us through the training so that we can be successful, godly people in an ungodly age. God bless you.